you need to learn to tune your own harp. It's not like a piano where you hire someone every couple years to come in and tune it. You tune it yourself every day. The more stable you can keep the temperature and humidity around your harp, the more it will stay in tune. When you're trying to decide where to keep your harp in your house, never put it in a window where it will get direct sunlight and try to keep it away from heating and air conditioning vents. But no matter how stable you keep the environment, your harp will still go out of tune. Learning to tune your harp is an important part of learning to play, and it's very important that you keep your harp in tune. There are several reasons for this. First of all, your harp is designed to have a certain amount of tension of the strings pulling up on the soundboard, and it's very important to keep this tension constant. Secondly, Every time you play your harp out of tune, you're training your ear that this is correct. You want to be sure that you're training your ear correctly from the beginning. The third reason is probably the most important. Your harp will sound much better when it's in tune. You and anyone listening to you practice will have a much better experience if your harp is in tune. New harps go out of tune a lot because all of the strings are stretching. The good news is that the more you tune your harp, the quicker it will stay in tune. Strings have a memory. The more you tune them to the exact same pitch, the quicker they will remember that pitch. Don't be surprised if you get frustrated when you're first learning how to tune. It takes a while to figure out which pin is which and how far to move your tuning key. But here's another piece of good news. The more you tune your harp, the faster you'll get. Every time you tune, you'll get a little bit more accurate and quicker, and soon you'll be tuning like a pro. Your harp should have come with a tuning key, also called a tuning wrench. Some keys have wooden or plastic handles, and some are rubber coated. Tuning pins and tuning keys come in various sizes. So if you ever need to buy another tuning key, be sure you get one that fits the pins on your harp. If you have a small lap harp, you can place it on the floor and tune it while sitting in a chair. When tuning any other harp, you should stand up behind your harp or slightly to the left. Always be sure that the sharping levers are down or disengaged before you begin to tune. The easiest way to tune your harp is with the help of an electronic tuner. There are dozens of brands and models of tuners available. Be sure that you buy what is called a chromatic tuner and not one for a guitar that just hears the six notes of the guitar. Some electronic tuners may not hear the very highest and lowest strings on your harp. If so, you'll need to tune these by ear. An electronic tuner will work much better with a tuning pickup. You plug the jack into the input hole in the tuner and then attach the clip to the edge of one of the holes in the back of the harp. You can also clip it to a tuning pin, a bridge pin, or a pedal, but we find that clipping it to the holes in the back of the harp works great. Now, whenever you pluck a string, the electronic tuner will pick up the vibrations from the harp itself, giving you a much stronger reading. This way you can tune in noisy environments. You can even tune in an orchestra pit when the tuba player next to you is playing scales. Most electronic tuners have two main features. First, to tell you what note the tuner is hearing when you pluck a string, there will either be lights or a screen display showing the note names, for example C, D sharp, etc. When you pluck a string, this is the part that you want to pay attention to first, being sure that it is displaying the same note name as the string you plucked. If you're plucking an F string, for example, you want to be sure that the tuner is indicating an F note so that you know you're in the right ballpark. If it is hearing an E instead of the F that you plucked, that tells you that the string is too flat or too low and you need to raise the pitch of the string. Be careful that you're not accidentally tuning the string to a sharp or a flat. For example, on this tuner there is a sharp light on the far right. If you pluck an F string and both the F light and the sharp light are lit, then you've tuned the string to an F sharp, which is too high. You need to lower the pitch until the sharp light goes off. Once you have the right letter showing, you'll watch the meter for your fine tuning. When you pluck a string, you want the needle to stop straight up in the middle. If the needle stops on the left, the string is flat or too low. When this happens, you want to raise the pitch by pushing your tuning key away from you with your thumb until the needle stops in the middle. 
However, if the needle stops to the right, the string is sharp or too high. And so you'll turn the key the opposite way, bringing your thumb back towards you until the string is in tune. You may need to go back and forth several times until the pitch is correct. When you're fine tuning, you don't need to move the key very far, especially on the high strings. Very tiny movements are all that are required. Refer to the manual that came with your electronic tuner for specific instructions about the tuner that you have. Pay particular attention to anything that talks about calibration. You normally will not need to calibrate your tuner, but on some tuners it's easy to accidentally change the calibration, which can really mess up your tuning. On this tuner, for example, you never want to push the pitch, down, and up buttons. Also, be aware of how the tuner will react if the battery is going low or is dead. On this tuner, the B light under the word bat will flash if the battery is low. 